Good evening and welcome. This is Sports Report. It is championship time. Everybody's right down to the wall. I brought my own little trophy. This goes to the best highlight line of the Ooh. night. This is our own state championship trophy. That's pretty cool. We got all six games. Let's get to it. We'll start things off, Andy, in the 1A title game at Willis Whitefield. The Galax Maroon tie with a record of 10 and 4, taking on the undefeated Riverheads Gladiators. 13 and 0. Riverheads has won three state titles. Galax looking for their first on a nine-game winning streak. And early on, it'll be the Galax defense here trying to bottle up that Riverheads offense, which has not scored less than 20 points all year. Here's Gary Campbell, the quarterback, and he gets introduced to Daniel Harrison, the linebacker. He doesn't want to meet him again. Long as fell there. Now it's punting time for the Gladiators. Galax is going to get pretty good field position inside the 45-yard line, down at the 43, and they want to go to Charles Harris, their bulldozing running back with over 3,000 yards on the year. Well, here's Harris right up the middle inside the 20. They finally catch him from behind at the 10. And that worked the first time, so let's just keep feeding him again. Here's Harris again. Up the middle, inside the 10, inside the 5, and that kind of worked that time. Let's feed him again. You're noticing a trend here. Harris again, this time to the 2, and he's still not quite in, but you know what? He took us all the way down here. Let's, oh yeah, let's give it to him again. Two-yard touchdown run. Harris, 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 Harris. It's a pretty easy stat sheet. It's a touchdown, 7 nothing Gala. And why not? Harris finished 82 yards shy of Thomas Jones' state record for rushing yards in the season. The extra point will be good for the Maroon Tide, and that could be pivotal later on. Here we go again on the rollout. This time it's the quarterback keeping it, Carson Orton, and he picks up a first down to the outside. Orton here is a first down here. Now it's going to be a handoff here at the running game. This time it's not Harris. Who is it? It's somebody else. <laughs> it's Peoples. Dougie Peoples with the run there to move the chains for Galax's offense here as they're getting near midfield, but go back to Harris because he's ultra consistent and productive. He carries half the team with him there as he picks up a first down. And all that worked, so let's do it again. Once again, it's Harris. We're going to call this highlight the Harris highlight as he's down inside the 15 yard line. The power running game trying to wear it on that Gladiators defense. Can Riverheads get a stop? They need one badly as they now move inside the five. He likes with a chance to finish it off. They'll go for it here, and the quarterback's going to be stood up. So that Riverheads defense getting an important stand here. They measure it just to be sure, and they're certain it's going to be first down for Riverheads, their football. Could have given it to Harris. I All right, so. well, they get a shot here. Deep in their own territory, down one possession. He gets away from the safety. Campbell takes off with it, and he picks up 17 yards out of his own end zone. Huge oh, play. That's sneaky Garrett Campbell there, showing off the mobility. The wheels here. Now he's going to throw the football. And can he get something to work here? Through the air, it's complete. A juggling catch by Tyler Smith, the sophomore, 43 yards, and they're in business. All right, in business. Schaefer going to... Kick it this time, the running back, uh, uh, they're not quite in business on that run. Couple of yards there, but good defense by Gala. Go back to the arrow attack, it's a fake. Play action here, rolling out. Campbell's got his man, touchdown Taz Miller from eight yards out, and a chance to win the game. They're not going for the extra point, they're going, they're going, going for, for two. Wow, they're going for two, it's drama. Under pressure, <laughs> rolls out. Campbell to the end zone, it's incomplete. Just out of the reach, the two point conversion, no good, and the Title goes to Galax, seven to six. Coach Mark Dixon and company celebrate their first state title, a 10 game winning streak. This team started out the season one and four, as you see Charles Harris with 28 carries for 182 yards and a touchdown run. Some important punting by Caleb Sperlin in this game, while the Gladiators finished 13 to one overall. Colt Miller finishing up with 85 yards on the ground and a touchdown catch. Time now to go to 2A. That's a one point game. That's the way to start, man. Let's go to 2A. Can they do any better? It's Appomattox, the Raiders coming in undefeated, taking on Clark County. The Eagles, they're trying to win their first state title, and so is Appomattox County. History is about to be made in Salem. Appomattox in the dark blue jersey. They brought the state flag with them. That doesn't give you any good credit there. Here we go off. This is Dre Perkins, and he is off to the races. 31-yard touchdown run, and the state flag seems to work so far. 7 to nothing. Raiders on top. That is just the way Coach Doug Smith wanted to draw it up here to begin the game. Now quarterback Matt Page completing a short pass to Deshaun Thomas. That's senior to senior there as they move inside the 40. Page getting some time to throw. This time he's going to avoid the pressure and complete it over the middle. It's Buster Henderson with the grab. Page looks pretty good. Looks pretty mobile. This time plenty of time to throw and he fires underneath to 
Devon Graves and Graves takes off. Couple of blockers inside the five yard line. Some elusive running after the catch by the sophomore there. And now they're going to punch it inside from four yards out with Trey Walker. Carter Jamerson's extra point is good. 14 0 Appomattox County. All right, not done yet. Clark says, hold on, we got some offense too. Jordan Turner to James Martin. And Martin down the sidelines, finally knocked out of bounds after a 27 yard gain. James is Clark County's favorite Martin. Now they run the football here. Matthew Dang, is he going to score? Oh, dang, he's just a yard shy of a touchdown. Well, he knocked the pylon over. No replay here, but uh, close. And they set it up on the one yard line. Not pictured, but a touchdown pass from Turner to Martin. Touchdown, six yards. PAT, though, no good. 14 to 6. Yeah, 14 to 6 as the PAT goes uh -huh. doink off the crossbar here. We got ourselves a battle, though, Andy, as it's the two way state championship game, fourth quarter, a one score game. The Raiders, though, say, let's open this thing up with Page and the passing game as he completes it here to Henderson. And Henderson is going to bust it loose. Look at him go here on the run inside the five. Got to set up Page. And he's just going to keep it himself this time. The one-yard touchdown run, not quite as dramatic, but it scores. It gets the, gets the job done. 21 to 6 Raiders now. They're not quite done yet because they got some defense. Oh, that hurt. Turner is punished by Rayshon Hartman, and the ball is loose. That's a fumble, and it is recovered by the Raiders. A sophomore picking up the loose pigskin, and now the running game with Philip Fleshman. Put it into extra gear. 22-yard touchdown run for Appomattox County. Extra point is good. 28 to 6, they lead it, and they're not done yet. That defense going to get after Turner again here as he drops back to throw and is intercepted. Devin Dews does well. 27 yard pick six for the Raiders. Not quite done yet because when they put the gas pedal down, they just dropped a brick on it and left it down the whole time. Little play action fake, and oh, that, look at that pick. Great pick by Buster Henderson. This is 47 yards the other direction, two pick sixes. Two consecutive drives, and that would do it. Your final, 42 to six. The Raiders from Appomattox over Clark County. 28 unanswered to win their first state title in school history and capping an undefeated season for Appomattox County over the Clark County Eagles. You see Matt Page, 15 of 19 through the air, 222 yards passing, had a touchdown run. Graves with 104 yards receiving, while Hunter Rogers had two takeaways in the loss for Clark County. Stay with us. We've got more state final games coming up, including a revenge game from last year. Lake Taylor Salem, also Magna Vista, Lord Botetourt, right here on Sports Report. Welcome back to Sports Report Championship Edition. The uh, Highlight championship trophy still up for grabs. Our trophy that, right? budget is not very big. But we roll on. Here is the 3A state championship. Magna Vista versus Lord Botetut. The Cavaliers of Lord Botetut trying to keep the Warriors from Magna Vista winning their second state title in a row. It's Arthur L. Williams Stadium at Liberty University in Lynchburg, the site for this one in the 3A title game. And first off, it is Lord Botetut running the football, and they're not going very Ooh. anywhere. Uh, Keon Taylor is stuffing that run game there. Whew. Tough. That hurt. Defensive battle early going almost into the first quarter. Still scoreless. Here is Shalen McGuire. And we're not scoreless anymore. Devin Johnson on the other end, the 25 yard touchdown pass. 7 0 Magna Vista. Like, ex like Eames' extra point is good. And McGuire's going to go back to the air as they fake the run. Rolling right. And he's got DeAndre Hayden. Yet there he is. He pulls it in. 41 yard touchdown for Magna Vista. That offense has scored over 40 points 10 times this year, Andy. They are explosive. They're explosive in a hurry. Missed the extra point. 13 to nothing, because look what they did. They tried to go for it, and that didn't work at all. That's way early to go for two points, and it didn't work for him. McGuire denied, and it's 13 to nothing. Not going to catch Coach Harless and his lower bottom top squad off guard too often. Now they will go to the air with Ryan Fralin. He's got a man. It's Garrison Mayo. He's been making plays all postseason long. A 22 yard hookup in the end zone for a touchdown. 13 to 7. Things getting closer near the half. Start wondering about that extra point. Back on offense, though, this is Jaquez Harrison. And look quick because he is fast. This is an 80 yard touch. See how fast he is? 80 yard touchdown run for Harrison. 20 to 7. 
Not hard to figure out why that guy's run for over 2,000 yards this year. And Harrison's not done. He's going to go right up the middle, untouched, slicing that defense for 60 more yards. That's 140 yards on two runs. It's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's a pretty good average per carry there. McGuire, though, not done yet. Rolls out under pressure, steps, fires, completes to Trayvon Red. And Red goes into the end zone. 20 yard touchdown pass. 33 to 7. Magna Vista opening it up. Folks can watch Red play football on Saturdays next year at Wake Forest. And Lord Botetot isn't finished Whoa. yet as Noah Fletcher will dart 61 yards to the end zone. We're getting big plays left and right. The onside kick scored two touchdowns in 12 seconds. Here's Magna Vista on fourth down. Trying to keep it going on the outside, and McGuire gets in. Seven yard touchdown run, and that was a huge play because they had really cut the lead down. And that one put them on top, give them a little breathing room. This one gives them a lot of breathing room. McGuire downfield to Hayden, 30 yard touchdown pass, 47 21, in a game that was really tight there for a little bit, but Magna Vista pulls away in the end. Some head spinning action there as Coach Joe Favero and his Warriors complete the back to back state title quest. 13-2 overall for them as they defeat that tough Lord Botetot squad, getting the state championship there, led by Jaquez Hairston, who finished 32 yards shy of a state playoff record for rushing yards in a game, 352 yards on the ground. Noah Fletcher had 144 yards rushing and a score in defeat for the Cavs. Now on to 4A. 4A, this is a revenge match. Salem versus Lake Taylor. They met last year. Lake Taylor took it relatively easily. We say relatively easily, but by a big margin, this time it would be a little different. It would be 41 to 16 last year at Liberty for the Titans winning the state title. They come in with that winning streak of 29 games. Salem is undefeated though on the year like the Titans and Dante Claiborne early on says, I want revenge. I'm going 30 yards to the house for a touchdown to get the Salem fans on their feet. Seven nothing Spartans. Dynamic rushing attack there by Claiborne. Dynamic passing attack. Here is Huey to Wayne Davis, but he's going the wrong way. Davis goes backwards and they finally catch him. The screen doesn't really work out too well for him. Yeah, the Salem defense did a good job of keeping the Gatorade State Player of the Year and Ohio State commit from breaking off the big plays that he's been known for all year long. Now it's Huey going deep for a receiver. It's deflected in the air and intercepted by Daniel Ponton, his seventh pick of the year. Good double coverage there. They seem to know where that was going. And here, it's seven to nothing only as we go to the second quarter. Defensive battle. And now it's Riley Fox from the two yard lines. He goes in 14 to nothing. Salem's feeling pretty good right here, but right. not done yet. And you see Tyreek Huey running here, scrambling, and it's going to be intercepted by Nick Wade, or is it? One referee says it's a pick, the other one says it's down and hit the turf incomplete. Is it? Watch oh, again. Right. we're going to go backwards in time. All right, now we're going to go forwards in time. Here is Huey rolling, and there's the ball right there. Diving interception, maybe, maybe not. It's hard to tell. The referee says, no, it is not interception. With two seconds left, Lake Taylor gets another shot at it. And it is Huey. Good protection. Huey fires, finds JT Wahi, and he runs and scores. Wahi with no time left in the half scores. It's in the Wahi jeans. Older brother George at Norfolk State, older brother Will at UVA, and Tyreek Huey at LU trying to tie it up. He does here with a touchdown run to cap a 14 play, 68 yard drive in seven minutes and 14 seconds. This one was so good. Let's have some extra fun. Overtime. Free football, everybody. Free football. First possession in overtime, and this is probably not a good call in overtime. No. The reverse goes the other way for Salem, and it's picked up by Rayshon Griffin at the bottom of there somewhere. Lake Taylor can complete the comeback, down 14, a chance to win it now, win back-to-back -back state titles. They're third in four years, fourth and five, their first field goal try of the year for Tyreek Huey, and it is good or no, it's not good. The Titans not thought it was, good. the referees say it wasn't. Remember, high school goalposts are wider than college goalposts, and that's what they're playing on at Liberty University. It's a smaller goalpost than they're used to. Coach Hank Sawyer and company did not like that call, and several others in the ball game. But Salem now has a chance to win in the second overtime. If they can stop Lake Taylor, who gets the ball first, still deadlocked at 14. All right, it is fourth down. Lake Taylor trying to go for it, issuing the field goal, and the pass gets knocked down. Huey got it stuffed right back in his face, and it's all on the offense now for Salem. Now here on the first play, Coach Steven Magabor says, let's kick it with sophomore Nate Kraft. The 27-yarder is good. 27-yard field goal for the sophomore, and Salem has done it. They have knocked off Lake Taylor, 
and ended the 29 game winning streak, their seventh state title in program history, their first since 2005. Our revenge tastes good. It tastes like a state trophy and a plaque. 17 to 14, the final. Look at the fans going crazy. The great game. They got free football, extra football in overtime. Not the first one of those we'll see in this broadcast. Stay with us. You see Hank Sawyer and company getting the runner up trophy. A tough ending for a great run for them. 29 straight, denied their third state title in four years. But Salem with the trophy, only Hampton with 17 state titles and Powell Valley with eight have more state titles than Salem in VHSL history. Kraft with the game winner. Claiborne added 65 yards on the ground. Lake Taylor led by Wayne Davis's 10 receptions for 80 yards and two pass breakups in a whale of a football game. Stay with us. We'll be right back with a 5A and the 6A, both of them played on the same day at the same field. At UVA, Highland Springs versus Stonebridge, Oscar Smith versus Westfield, right here on Sports Report. Welcome back to Sports Report alongside Andy Mashaw. I am Matthew Hatfield. It's on to Charlottesville and the University of Virginia for the Group 5A State Football Championship. The Highland Springs Springers at 13-1 taking on the 10-4 Stonebridge Bulldogs who get things started with quarterback Joe Thompson firing it to Chase Ridley, a diving grab for the Bulldogs. Diving grab and a first down, and that's kind of the way that things would shape up here as the offense goes to work and over the middle is intercepted. Thompson picked off by Greg Dortch and look at Dortch come back. You throw an interception and you don't want to throw it to a running back because this is why. Big return for Dortch inside deep into the territory of Stonebridge and uh, this is where things go wrong for them here. Not only do they have Dortch going to Wake Forest but they have DJ Anderson the running back who is dangerous in the open field and they're not going to catch him. 61 yards to Pater as the Springers get on the board first for coach Lauren Johnson. Big run for Anderson, 7-0, Highland Springs on top. Now, could they come back? Yes, they can come back. Ridley, a two-yard touchdown run on the outside, ties it at 7-7, make diving catches, take weird good fakes and inside handoffs, does chase Ridley, and it's tied up at 7 off. Oh, a great call by Mickey Thompson and company, trying to win their first state title since 2007. Meanwhile, it's Jawan Carter going to the air, and he has an open receiver. Kavon Wallace, the Cincinnati commit, 22 yards for the touchdown, and the Springers, they have a lot of speed and playmakers. They're in the lead, 13-7. 13-7, all right, well, let's get things rolling. The fans like it. Look at that, they're on top, they're happy. Can they keep it rolling? Here is Thompson. Sets back, under pressure, takes a shot, fires, oh, it's intercepted. Kevon Wallace can catch offensive passes, he can catch defensive passes too. Here he goes, upfield, looking to take it all to way back. He gets to midfield, dances, cuts back. Finally, they get him down, but he's not done yet. That's the end of the half. They come right back to start the third quarter. Who do they go to? Yep, that's Kevon Wallace again. This stiff arm down the sidelines, gets a good block. And he scores. It's a hat trick of Kevon Wallace. Oh, it's Wallace's world right now as he catches the touchdown here. And we got to watch that again. An athletic play on the interception. Then he comes back on the pass from Jawan Carter and just gives a mean oh. stiff arm to that no. Stonebridge defender and says, I am going to score no matter what. Touchdown Springers. All right. 21 to 7 now. What are they going to do? Oh. 19 to 7. Oh, I see. I cheated. I blew it. 21 to 7 now. Look at Dorch on the pass off the muddle huddle. That was tricky, Springers, and now it's Greg Dortch. He will torch you, and he's going to go all the way. He breaks away from a couple tackles, and he's got the speed to take it the distance. 66 yards for Dortch, and he wants to grab that torch here. Look at this one here. Oh, he makes one guy miss, Ooh. and he takes off and just runs until somebody finds him, and he says, I'm just going to run by you and over you and do whatever it takes to get to the end zone for a touchdown. Highland Springs showcasing all the speed and talent. Starting to pull away. Extra point is blocked, though, and it's 27 to 7, a 20 point lead. And Jack Casco's blocked PAT helped the Stonebridge Bulldogs get a stop, but you got to get Jawan Carter down, too, because if you focus too much on Wallace and Dorch, he can take off and run. Looked like they had him there. That should have been a sack, but Carter's just too fast for him. Scrambles up. Here he is again. Rolls out. I got him. I got him. It's a sack. I'm going to get a sack in this. Uh oh. I'm not getting a sack in the state final. He takes off, scrambles, a good 25-yard gain there. Highland Springs doing a nice job of spreading out Stonebridge, but this time they won't as Matthew Fialdini and Omar Rosario stop here to the running game of Highland Springs. They have to throw to beat Stonebridge sometimes because that running game will get sniffed out real quick. 
Well, they're going to throw. Throw it just like this. Carter outside. That is Dorch on the outside. He's tough to bring down. They get him out, but he picks up the first down, and then that means you can do this. Takes the knee, runs out the clock, and that is the final. 27 to 7, Highland Springs over Stonebridge. The Springers' first state championship since 1961 when they were named state champs. Didn't have to play the game. This time they won the game. Kevon Wallace leading the way with two touchdown catches for the Springers. Now we turn our attention to 6A. It's undefeated Oscar Smith taking on 13-1. Westville led by Tyler Scanlon headed to Boston University to play basketball. Also a football star, Sean Mitchell, the star quarterback for Oscar Smith. But early on, it'll be Westfield's running game with Timothy Beard, a seven-yard touchdown run to get the Bulldogs on the board first. Big, powerful, strong team from Westfield. Huge offensive line. Look at the hole open for Beard. Just a cavalry down inside the goal line versus the speed and athleticism of Oscar Smith. So far, it is Westfield one, and off to the races they go. This is Raymond Johnson takes it himself, the quarterback. 45-yard touchdown run, and the big guys lead it 14 to nothing. And when Johnson came back, they moved Tyler Scanlon from quarterback to wide receiver. Coach Rich Morgan and the Tigers trying to make some adjustments. They've had a magical season, and Kalik Perry with a magical play right here. Look at this. He gets by two or three guys. He's going to take it. Look, great balance for Kalik Perry. 42 yards to the house. Where's Perry? Oh, he's in the end zone. That's where he is. 42 yards, 14 to 7, and here, not done yet. Courtney Johnson, this time showing they can run the ball on the goal line. He takes it in off the left side, and it's a tie game. It's deadlocked. Oscar Smith, you know, they're very resilient under Coach Morgan, trying to win their third state title since 2008. Meanwhile, it's Westfield now with Ramon Johnson. And, oh, there's Tyler Scanlon. He's 6'7". He's going to catch every Ooh. jump ball his way, and he does here for a 30-yard score. That was actually pretty good coverage right there. It's just at 6'7". You can't do anything about that. He just outreaches you. He goes up and gets a rebound. That's why he averages about 20 and 12 in basketball. He's a guy to go get the jump ball, get the rebounds, and Westfield fans, Oscar Smith fans at UVA enjoying the atmosphere and the game. It's 21-14, and Sean Mitchell and company now trying to tie it up, but uh-oh, uh -oh. it's intercepted by Kevin Petrillo. No relation to Sophia, but he's trying to find the end zone. He won't quite get there, but Westfield opportunistic. Opportunistic in the second half. Look, Mitchell stares down Chapel the whole way, and it's a pick. And an easy pick for Petrello, and he gets to the outside, and would it set up a touchdown? Yes, it would. It sets up Johnson on a 16-yard carry, and he knocks the pylon over. They give it to him. Touchdown, 28-14. Oscar Smith drills now. They're going to fall behind here. They're going to have to get something going here. Every time they're in trouble, though, they get out of trouble. And Shelton Hood with the halfback pass to Larry Chapel. He's fast and will take it all the way 55 yards as Coach Morgan reaches into the bag of tricks. Westfield's not done, though, as here's Raymond Johnson. He's going to try to get in for the touchdown. Uh-oh, it pops loose, and Kalik Perry's got it. He might go all the way. There he goes. Whoa, he's fast. 96-yard interception, fumble on interception, a fumble return, 96-yard touchdown, and it's tied at 28. One last shot for Westfield, and a field goal is no good. He missed it wide right. 43-yarder was wide right by Brian Denby. How demoralizing for Westfield. They had a chance to put it away, and they missed a field goal to win it. Now they go to overtime, and here is Tim Beard. What a workhorse he was in this game. Touchdown, Bulldogs. They don't die either. You see right there, Westfield, a very tough team. And Oscar Smith coming right back with a score. D'Angelo White gets in the end zone. Let's play two overtimes. Well, keep it going. More free football. They switch it up. And this is Johnson on Oscar Smith's second person possession and overtime he scores and then the keeper from Johnson two Johnsons they both get in the end zone a one yard sneak 42 to 42. They might play this game until Sunday the game keeps going now we're in overtime number three it's Westfield again with Timothy Beard and there's that massive O-line again Andy giving him great running room to operate and find the end zone. All right one more shot for Oscar Smith here is first down Mitchell on the rollout the sprint out stop sets fires it may have been tipped almost intercepted but it's incomplete. Second down, Johnson, this time on the screen. Squirts inside the five, and drive the legs, and he gets to around the three. Third down, it's Johnson again. Squirts up to the one, so it's fourth down. Here's the last chance. Sean Mitchell on fourth down, rolling right. He throws it, and it's out of bounds, incomplete. Westfield will celebrate and win. What a classic this was, 49 to 42 as the Bulldogs prevail over Oscar Smith. and. They get it done with an unbelievable performance from their offense, putting up 
that many points in that Tigers defense. Tim Beer with three touchdown runs while Larry Chappell had eight receptions for 205 yards in defeat for the Tigers. Join us when we come back. Sports Report takes a hiatus. We'll be back in January with basketball. Stay right with us on the Sports Report.